Hi, I'm Laura Sherwood. I'm from Salisbury, New Brunswick, uh, just outside of Moncton, New Brunswick. And uh, we would, I would be in Canada. I am so glad you've joined me today. I'm also known as the Firefly Stamper. The reason I chose that name is because I love lighting up one heart at a time with the wonderful paper creations and card creations uh, that we're able to make. Today, I'm going to be using the Elegantly Said Bundle. It's on page 69 of our annual catalog. And if you don't have a copy of the annual catalog yet, uh, please let me know. And I, if you're in Canada, I'll certainly uh, mail you one. And on page 69, we see that we have the uh, suite, and the suite includes the uh, lovely cording and ribbon, or not ribbon, cording, and a punch and your stamp set. And I wanted to show you the paper, although I'm not using it for this card, I did want to show you the paper. So you can see how shiny it is from the light I have on my camera reflects on it. And of course, as the papers are always uh, double-sided, I have used my uh, my paper, so it comes in all kinds of pieces now. Uh, I've enjoyed using it, and actually the cards I'm doing this month with my crew are from uh, this set and from the paper, the suite. And I don't know if you can actually see this. This is kind of a very general but really great uh, paper to be able to combine with others. And we have this paper. Uh, this is the reverse side. And again, you can see that it's shiny because it's reflecting the light. Uh, this paper, actually, the reverse side, it gives you a good idea of the wonderful designs that are here. Isn't this pretty? Also very reflective. You can see that and uh, the reverse side again is a great one you can match up with uh, other paper so i think that's uh, all the paper and the sides again on mine is all cut up so it's a little challenging uh, in a sense to show you but again if you want to see all the details turn to page 69 of our new annual catalog and again if you don't have this yet then let me know and if you live in canada i can mail you a copy now the card that we're creating today, I'm not using the designer series paper at all. Uh, it's great because sometimes it's so difficult to um, create uh, masculine cards and certainly this paper lends itself to masculine cards. But I am making a, uh, I'm breaking with the uh, norm of that paper and I'm just using cardstock and I'm using stamps and I'm using embossing, um, embossing powder. And uh, if you can see that card, how pretty it is, and uh, some pretty ribbon. And that is the card that we're going to uh, be creating today. So again, thank you for joining me. And uh, let's get to work and uh, work on this card. So to start with, I will talk about the dimensions. And uh, again, this is the uh, card that uh, we will be creating. Uh, the dimensions of the paper, I will mention that when I do my classes, I always do up a full set of instructions with dimensions and so forth. So this here piece is Petal Pink Card Base. It measures eight and a half by five and a half and it is scored at four and a quarter. I also would need a scrap of the pink, a Petal Pink for the Elegantly Said Punch. As well, we would want a piece of the Flirty Flamingo, five and a quarter by four. And I've already started the process of preparing the card, as you can see. I've also stamped with the Flirty Flamingo ink on the Flirty Flamingo uh, cardstock. On the inside of your card, you are going to want a piece uh, that measures the five and a quarter by four inches and uh, I am, am using the on the inside I actually use the petal pink um, ink and I will show you the inside because I won't be showing it again uh, this is the inside so I use the petal pink and then I use the stamps from the elegantly set I also use the flirty flamingo uh, ink on the inside of the card for the happy birthday. And the happy birthday is actually from Peaceful Moments. I use the sentiment <clears throat> from here. So that is all I'll be saying about the inside. <clears throat> and as you see, I used a couple of the stamps, different stamps from the Elegantly Said to give it a cute little look on the inside. So let's talk about how we are going to create the outside. I am going to uh, set this aside. <clears throat> 
And as you see, I used the corner stamp. I'm calling it a corner stamp, for lack of a better word. And I would have uh, inked it up in the Flirty Flamingo. And then I went and I had a piece of paper underneath because you don't want to, uh, you really don't want to get this all over your, your working surface. So I would have put a piece uh, underneath and then I just went and inked it up. And then I would have done here, I inked it up again and did here. And as you see, I kind of twisted it around. Uh, so you can do whatever you like if you like them all the same or if you want them a little bit different. Uh, so this one here was like that. And now on the first card, which I'm thinking I probably like the look of better, I really mirrored the images uh, per se. And uh, so I stamped here and then I just turned it around and then stamped it here. Now this one, I've done it off a little bit. So we'll see what that looks like when it's done. But that was the uh, process for getting the Flirty Flamingo onto the Flirty Flamingo card stock. Now where I wanted to uh, spend my little bit of time is actually doing the uh, process for embossing. And so as you can see from this card, it is white. And so that is actually embossing powder. Uh, and so I need to use the Versamark uh, for that process. So here is the Versamark that I will be inking up my pad. And I will um, put it over top of each of these images. Now, the one thing you will want to note, as I show this up close, you can see that I've staggered the images. So you can see the uh, Flirty Flamingo image in behind each of these. And I actually quite like that because you get a really dimensional look uh, when you uh, do that. So let's try doing that again today. And I'm going to, uh, now this pad is actually quite small compared to the stamp, so I'm going to hold it in my hand. And I'm going to ink this up with the Versamark ink. And it is a sticky, it's a sticky ink. So I'm going to ink that up. And there we go. And so I'm going to go over each of these. So the first thing I'm going to do, I think I'll do my large images. And again, I want to go up, down just a bit from those. So there's one. And I'm going to press that into place. And then lift. All right. And then I'm, and I can tell that I've got the image there because I can see it just barely with the uh, wet, with the wet ink. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to flip this around. And again, I've got the paper underneath. So here I am. And again, I want to just um, bring it a bit down because I want that image underneath to show. I want that color to show. So there's that one. So now we're going to, and I'm putting white, the Versamark, only on the corners and in the center. So I'm not going to be doing the additional, the additional pieces. So let's get this one. Uh, done up. So we have, what have we got here? This one, this way. So I am going to, again, just go down just a bit. I got two together, these two right here. Just looking for my mark. I'm going to go down just a bit from the top and I'm going to press that down. And then I'm going to do the other image. And you notice I'm, I'm actually um, stamping, putting the ink over the whole stamp each time because uh, it will take off some, but not uh, what's left here in the corner. And I want to make sure the stamp is fully, fully done. So here's this one this way. So again, I want to go down just a bit so that ink shows. So those are those two corners. So I only have these two corners left to do. And I will continue to ink up my stamp. I have to determine where my, that's lovely where the picture's on the back. And I would say that goes this way. And I'm going to do this. All right. And then I just have this one corner left that I want Versamark on. There we go. And then I will see how, oops, oh, this way right here. Was it too hard? And... There we go. Okay, so now we're ready to put this away. I'll clean that up in just a moment. And I am going to get my embossing powder. And I'm going to put my embossing powder over. And as you see, I have it in a container, so I don't have to worry about losing any. 
I'll be able to put it back. So there is my embossing. I want more on it, of course. And I'm going to actually use, I've got a coffee filter here, but I'm just going to put it right into the, for sake of time, I'm going to put it right in like that. Then I can get it out of the container momentarily and take off any excess. I want some a little bit more there on the corner. So we're just going to reverse this and I am going to go see if I can get a little bit more there. There we go. And I'm going to take all this and I'm going to take my jar and I'll, I'll get that all put back in later. And the next thing I'm going to do is take my heat tool and this is loud. So you'll uh, just wait for a moment. My cord's not quite long enough to get to the camera. So I'm going to turn this on let it heat, heat up, and then I am going to put it on my Versamark. If my cord were a little longer, I would actually bring this over so you could see the changing of the uh, colors as we put the heat tool onto that white embossing powder uh, with the Versamark and uh, it just starts to uh, really pop. You get that nice crisp white um, stamp. Beautiful. So just give me a moment as I, as I do this. It is a lot of Versamark and embossing powder uh, to uh, get melted together to get that beautiful design on our paper. So here we go. This is the finished product. Isn't that beautiful? So from here, I will put this aside, let you see it. I want to get rid of this. And I do want to clean up my surface here just a bit because I did get some embossing powder on the table. Let's just get rid of that. There we go. So here is our card that we're doing. Now the next thing I want to do is to actually take a bow, and um, which I already have made, and I want to take and put that a piece of ribbon around the card. So here's my piece of ribbon for around the card. I already have my bow that has been made. It just needs to be trimmed. And I'm going to take my stamp and seal. And so I want my, my ribbon, basically, if you want to put them side by side, I want them want approximately here. Put that down. So I want it about right there. And I am going to just turn that over. So I'm going to put my there we go i'm gonna put a little bit of glue and actually what i'm going to do is pull this through so i don't use as much ribbon and i'm going to go there i'm going to flip this over and we're going to go here i'm just going to cut off that little extra there we go so there is my ribbon across the front I'm going to now adhere this to my card front. So I would have um, taken my piece of cardstock that I scored, taken my bone folder, and I would have done this, done that with my bone folder. So the next thing I'm going to do is just adhere my card front. And I'm, I know my tape is right here in front of me. Ah, oh dear, so close as we would say, would have bitten me if it was any closer. There we go. So I'm not sure what it's like where you are, but uh, here we've got uh, a little bit of a sunny day. It's a little overcast, not too warm. I've got all the uh, my windows open today, enjoying the temperature. It's beautiful temperature. I'm just putting some extra, some extra stamp and seal on this, just to hold that down. So here we go, here's the front of my card. Always make sure your card is turned in the right direction. And before you put it on, I don't know about you, but I have been known to put it on wrong. There we go. So that is going to go there. 
Then we're going to take a glue dot, my glue dot, and I am going to bring up a glue dot, which is right there. I'm going to determine which is the front and the back of the bow, and I'm going to put a glue dot on there. And before I adhere it, actually, I should have waited just a moment, I'm going to stamp. Now, normally I would actually stamp first and then punch, uh, but I just thought that to save time, I'd have that punch, but we'll see how much time it saves if I can get it on straight. I want to make sure none of that embossing powder is kicking around. And here we go. I'm going to get this loaded with ink. I always tell people tap and not to press too hard. I'm going to do that. We're going to see if we can get this on here somewhat straight. There we go. And that worked out beautifully. All right. Part of the um, thing is, is getting ours, and I would clean my stamp right away as well. Part of it is getting this on um, straight, is having your, your sticker on the opposite side on straight and helps a lot because I've been known to actually get them on crooked, on the st stickers on crooked. Now, I'm using a dauber. I'm going to load it with ink. And if you notice with this card, I went around the edge of the cards. And so that's what I'm going to do, the tag, I should say, not the card. So I'm just going to go around the edge and uh, just give it a little bit of a flare, as it were. And here, you're not going to see much uh, as far as uh, the end of the tag, but it's nice to have it kind of maybe put a little bit on there if you like. It's totally up to you what you do. So there we go. I'm going to set the dauber aside. I find daubers come in really handy, actually. I quite like them. Set that aside. I'm going to get my dimensionals. Now I will mention that dimensionals, uh, I've got white dimensionals. You can get black ones as well. But this one, these are the regular size um, foam mounts or dimensionals. And these ones are the mini ones. So I think for this one, I'm just going to use the regular. So this is a brand new package and uh, that I'm opening up here today. Here we go. And I'm going to use my uh, pick tool to Get one up, and I'm just going to adhere here them here on the back, and this I don't know. Some people like to minimize their use of dimensionals. Uh, some people like to make sure that they've just got lots. So I would say that is definitely lots for the dimensionals. Now the next thing that we're going to do is um, we're going to be putting this on after I take the stickies off and it's going to basically be centered there and I want a little ribbon showing on this side. So I'll take off my dimensionals and I don't know if you have a pick tool but I find this tool very, this tool that I'm using, I find it very uh, very useful. So here is our card, here is our tag and I am going to just do that. Then the sticky that I have here I am going to just arrange it however you like. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to trim this up a little bit. There we go. Now the next thing I want, which I do not know if I even have them out. I think I do, oh, here they are. I'm going to take um, the basic pearls. The pearl basic jewels are called. I'm going to take the putty end and I'm going to put some on my card. If I can see where it is to open it, right here. I try to keep my all my gems and things in the package um, because it protects them from coming off. So I'm going to take a good size one here. I'm going to put it right there. Then I'm going to take a smaller one. And I'm just going to put it over here, right there. And I'm going to take, now they always say work in odd, odd numbers, so I try to. I don't always succeed, but I try. So three, one, two, three. So there is our card completed, as easy as that. And as I said, uh, you can complete uh, the inside of the card. Um, I did take my white and I stamped happy birthday again with the peaceful moments, happy birthday. And then I took the, um, the uh, petal pink and I stamped the flower and the edging that is from the elegant stamp set. So that's our card for today. 
I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I will be posting uh, this on YouTube, and then I will also be posting instructions on my blog, The Firefly Stamper. Thank you for watching.